Hello everyone. Aditya is on mute. Yeah, yeah. Hello everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, this is Aditya Somani, and welcome to this session. Uh, in I am a second year undergraduate student from uh, from Bich Pilani Hyderabad campus, and in this session, which is brought to you by uh, GDSC Bich Hyderabad, uh, I am going to try to you know scratch the surface of what exactly neural networks are. Then we are going to learn about the math behind neural networks and. then we'll understand why why do we need to use neural networks and also what are the disadvantages and finally we'll you know code a uh, code a bit and use a pre-trained neural network to to do some predictions so yeah uh, let's get started i i hope my screen is visible and so uh, the, at the start i uh, like to ask a question that there's a uh, a very mainstream trendy term going around deep uh, that is deep learning right so uh, do you know exactly what deep learning is and i'll i'll break down that uh, at the start of the session so yeah so uh, uh, machine learning can be further broken down into two types the uh, first one is shallow learning and the second category is deep learning now uh, let's start with an example uh, all the cities across across our nation are are categorized into three types right tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 so so the government would probably have looked up uh, and you know chosen chosen some features and then then classified the cities so probably you know it's possible that population could have been a factor another factor could have been the the area of the city maybe the total number of uh, vehicles present in the city can be a factor so let's say that the government looked at five five such factors and then then classified the cities now what could have been done is that uh, every city could could you know be assigned a total score so maybe if two times the population plus three times the area plus something 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 and the value of the sum of these this equation if if this is greater than a particular value then it's a tier 1 city in some range it's a tier 2 city in some range it's a tier 3 city right so this is a very uh, plausible expression uh, explanation of what could have happened and in this case so let's let's uh, get into thoda sa machine learning jargon so these uh, population and area are the features over here right and the 2 and 3 are the weights weights assigned to these features now what happens is in in case of shallow learning we as humans choose these features and then feed it to the computer and then the computer you know looking at the training data comes up with the best algorithm or the equation and assigns weights to each feature accordingly right so i hope i'm making sense till now now let's take another example you you are given you are given a picture and you need to tell me that the picture if is of a cat or not of a cat now for us as humans this is this is a very easy task we can just you know in a glance tell whether the the picture has a cat or not but to for computers it is this task is uh, humongously difficult compared to us and for us to hard code an algorithm which can classify images as cats or not cats is again very difficult imagine you know selecting features like ears of a cat or you know the whiskers of a cat and then uh, parameterizing it the curve on the ear or something so yeah the point is that that this this gets very difficult for us as humans to hard code so this is where deep learning come, comes in and what happens is in deep learning is that that the computer itself chooses the features as well as the weights and this is essentially uh, taking the taking programming one step closer to the computer that's why that's why this is where artificial intelligence really gets started and yeah that's that's about it on shallow and deep learning let's let's move forward and and i'll i'll give another example before we before we exactly jump into neural networks so 
so let's say you after every day when when you step into your house you open the door you step in there's a switchboard on your right over here so every day you step in you turn to your right you turn on the switchboard step in turn to the right turn on your switchboard and this has been a habit for you uh, over years correct and now for some reason you you had to shift your house and in the new house the the switchboard lies lies on the left right so for the first few, few days out of habit or what we call as muscle memory in layman terms you still step in and turn to your right uh, right until you realize that you like the switchboard is not on the right anymore so this this uh, this idea of of this happening with our human brains uh, there's a very very common phrase which goes by neurons which fire together wire together and that is the idea behind neural network before before jumping to neural networks let's let's better understand this scenario so there is a particular set of neurons which get activated when you step into your house and there is another set which which fires up when you turn to your right so for years uh, both these sets have been you know coherently firing up so so the connections between those neurons are strengthening over time i'm not going into the biology or the chemistry behind these connections but yeah that's the idea and what happens is that even when you shift your house the the set of neurons uh, get uh, there's a particular set which gets act- activated when you step in and that makes the turning right while a set to fire up and yeah this is the idea behind neural networks and uh, now let's move on to neural networks and i'll give another example soon so neural networks so as the name suggests a uh, a uh, network of a network of neurons right so one last example and then we'll we'll get started so uh, i'll i'll write a few integers So I just wrote integer four in in three different types, right? And and again, for us as humans, it's it's very easy to tell each of this is four. But for you to hard code and tell the computer, it's again difficult because this is a very boxy sa four. This four sort of has a protrusion over here, and this four is very curved. And yeah, that. that there's a lot of differences between these but uh, our human brain can still identify it easily so what we did was we as as it's easier for our brain so we use the structure of our brain in in building a neural network how uh, we'll see it on the next slide yeah so let me zoom in a bit so this is a 4k image and uh, and this image is 28 pixels uh, all and 28 pixels wide so this image has a total of uh, 784 pixels correct and each pixel over here is is lit up by uh, by a different intensity so for example what we'll do is that we'll uh, you know tag every pixel uh, activation is what we call the, how bright it is to be between 0 and 1 so pixel which is completely black is is a 0 and a completely white pixel is is a one so a pixel over here can can be you know a one a pixel somewhere over can be a 0.5 a pixel in in this black region is probably a zero and we we assign this value to each pixel and we'll call that as as activation for now another uh, another machine machine learning term right so we take all these 784 pixels and and we you know uh, spread them out in a in a single row so th- th- there are all our 784 pixels lined up over here and we pass them through a neural network this let's this box is your neural network for now and what happens is that there are 10 possible outputs of what we passed in right it can be anything from a 0 to a 9 and the uh, what we like the the highest probability of what the input is that particular output neuron will light up with the with the maximum intensity now what is inside this box is exactly what a neural network is but 
yeah that's how uh, that's the basic input output structure of a neural network on next slide we'll understand the the working of a neural network and everything so yeah let's move further so what happens is i, I have uh, drawn so inside that box there are hidden layers so i took two hidden layers over here these two and this is our output layer and this this is an arbitrary number we can choose uh, the number of hidden layers we want to have and we can also choose the number of neurons we we intend to have in our hidden layers i have taken them to be 20 and and 16 for now right so what goes on is that every neuron in in a particular layer is is connected to every neuron in the next layer so this neuron will have connections from every neuron coming in and similarly the next neuron in and yeah the, the structure goes on now uh, this this connection sort of has you know sort of has a strength and the strength varies for each connection what we what we call the strength as is is the weight of the neuron right and yeah like hold with me over here with with the math for a few minutes and then then we'll move on to the intuition behind neural networks and well uh, as well and and all this will add up eventually so what what happens is that how much will this particular neuron fires up is is depends on this particular product which is the product of all the activation with the corresponding weights and add them up yes so this is the activation one, this is the weight one, you multiply them, then this is the activation two, this is the weight two, you multiply them and you know, this all this adds up, W2 till the, uh, A N W N, which is N is 780 for, uh, 784 for us, right? Now, uh, there's another thing which comes in, let's say we want, we want the, let's say, uh, this is an assumption that we want this, neuron to fire up between zero and one. So we we pass this whole thing to, to a function. And that function is known as the activation function. And that function does the job for us and and compresses all this input to some value between zero and one for now, right? And, and let's say another assumption that th this particular function uh, give something a value zero when when the input is input is let's say uh, greater than ten, correct? And and you want this neuron to fire up in a particular manner. And if this product for you is this sum for you is coming out to be zero, and you still want this neuron to fire up, right? So what will you do? You'll add some value, right? You maybe you'll add an eleven over here. So if, if it's an increasing function, then probably the neuron will fire up with some intensity. So this thing which we just added over here is known as the bias. Huh. I guess we are done with all the terms. So now, now let's uh, explore the structure more. So what happens is that this, this structure goes on. So every neuron over here is connected to everything in the next layer and so on, right? There, there are like many more connections. I'm just drawing a few to to get a get a sense of what's happening. And what will happen finally is that when you pass pass uh, a particular number, some some neuron over here will will fire up and tell you that you know this this is what you you passed in, right? Uh, we'll discuss more about the activation function, but that's what is happening for now. So let's say you passed. Uh, the integer four, the same image over here, and this uh, one, like zero, one, two, three, four, and yeah, this this neuron fires up with the maximum intensity to to indicate that the input is four. So how does this work? You know, uh, can we get a better intuition of what's happening inside the network? So break. Uh, let's uh, observe something. There is something which is consistent in a four. That is that. This four can be broken down into like this four can be broken down into a, a small L-shaped thingy and and a straight line, right? So there can be 
uh, a particular neuron which which detects uh, this l shaped thing and there is another particular neuron which which detects this straight line and both of these make this neuron fire up right now this this l shaped thing can be further broken down into uh, a straight line and a sleeping line right so there can be uh, a pair of neurons in in the layer behind this which which detect a straight line maybe this one and this one detects a sleeping line and these two then fire up and uh, you know increase the value this value over here and make this neuron fire up right and again this this sleeping line can can be this is constituted of some particular set of maybe 20 uh, maybe you know 10 neurons over here which which add up and make this particular line fire up right so this is what's happening this is we don't know what like how the pattern is exactly broken down but this is again a very very plausible explanation of what's happening inside the network and uh, more important that this is enough understanding for us to 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 be precise use the networks the best way possible right so yeah that's that's uh, that's that and now let's discuss more about the the activation function so so there are many different types of activation function. Just a reminder, activation function was this function we pass this value into, right? And uh, these are some common examples. So this is a, a ReLU activation function. What, is the, what it does is that the negative values pay, there's no, there's no output. And as soon as uh, the a positive value comes in, it's, it's a linear function of, uh, like of order n. And this is a sigmoid function. This, this, as I said, this is one of those which limits the uh, the the output between zero and one. If I'm not wrong, the the equation of this function is one upon one plus e to the power minus x. And yeah, so the the range I guess is zero to one for for all inputs. And this is 0 0.5 when the when the input is zero. So yeah, that's that's another act activation function. Softmax is is relatively a more complicated function which which to be precise uh, it what it does is that softmax is a function which is usually used in the in the last layer this this might be a bit complicated so it's good if you get it it's fine if you don't so what it does is that that the sum of all these probabilities of the like the there's some some uh, some probability of the output being zero of the input being zero some probability of the input being one software softmax ensures that this like this is these are actually probabilities and the the sum is one otherwise these can be just random values and we choose the the maximum value out of it so there are networks in which all the hidden layers have relu as their activation function and the the final layer has softmax as their activation function and so on so yeah uh, i hope i'm making sense till now again uh, there's just one more thing one or a couple of more things that we need to we need to explore before we go and code code uh, and you know get started with coding so now let's discuss how exactly is a is a neural network trained so what happens is that that when we get started all these weights and biases are are just assigned some random values right and then you pass in pass in a let's say any integer let's say a four so what happens is that each of these will light up with with different different activation and if we have used softmax as the last layer these will be probabilities right so so uh, let's say this this four cup probability comes out as 0 0.2 which is very bad and for two the integer two let's say the probability comes out as 0 0.5 as as it's the training data we do have the actual values of probabilities correct so this this we have as a zero and the probability of it being a four is one. So what we do is that we we subtract these two and we square the value and we do this for every possible output and we sum all of this up. So this sum is is known as the loss. And the idea is to minimize these loss, which is essentially saying that our expected values and the values which we got are 
as close to each other as possible so when when the loss is high the network will send feedback so what will it it will do is that you know this its point to needs to be increased increased so the weights and biases will be adjusted accordingly there might be a particular weight which is which is pulling the whole value down so uska value will be changed then then probably these two connections will be will be strengthened like it's it's possible right because us say that the point to ka value will increase and this feedback will then further be prop- uh, propagated from uh, right to left so this this whole process is known as back propagation so you adjust these two then to adjust these two you need to adjust something over here and then again you need to adjust these weights and biases to adjust the the activation of these neurons and that's how the the information is passed back and then you keep training this network over and over again by passing different training inputs and yeah you finally get uh, get a set get a get a final model right uh, so one more thing i like to discuss is that to 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 understand why neural networks are so smart let's let's just look at the number of parameters we are playing with over here the number of values that we can change to to you know the number of permutations and combinations possible in a neural network so for example let's just see there are seven i'll just write it down first there are 784 uh, uh, neurons over here and there are 20 neurons over here so the total connections are 784 times 20 and there are 20 biases so add 20 to this then similarly in the next layer there are 20 times 16 connections and add a 16 the number of biases then there are 16 times 10 connections and 10 biases as well so let's see what what this uh, what this whole expression is 784 times 20 Plus twenty plus twenty times sixteen plus sixteen plus sixteen times ten plus ten, which is one seventy. So the total over here is sixteen thousand two hundred and six. So that's the the number of parameters which we can play play with over here. And for us as us as humans to to come up with itna sara parameters and then change their values, it's it's almost impossible. and that is why neural networks are smart because they can you know vary so much with the same number amount of parameters so yeah uh, we are done with what i needed to explain as in what goes behind and inside a neural network now before we get uh, get started and with we, we code a few things i I'll, i'll just i'll just like to touch up upon why can we like the disadvantages of neural network so after looking at this the obvious thought is can we use neural network for everything and the answer is yes we can but uh, but like, yes we can ideally but there are a few limitations so there are two major limitations to be precise and the first one of them is data so for you to get a uh, you know good data which is well tagged is is very difficult and and in a significant uh, amount for example you, you need to manually tag the data first to feed it to the to the neural network and that that becomes a, a difficult task because because neural networks ask for a lot of data there needs to be thousands of images which are tagged before we can you know make a, a, a handwritten digit recognizer so there are some publicly available uh, available data sets which you can use for your practice but yeah that's one challenge while while building a gu- neural network from ground up another challenge is is the cost so what happens is that neural networks need a lot of energy to to train which is pretty ev- evident from the number of parameters we are playing with and so you need very strong gpus to to train these neural networks and uh, these these gpus like each one of these gpus is is in thousands of dollars so the the cost is is not feasible for for most of us right so usually what people do is that we you train them over cloud uh, google cloud or uh, azure or uh, aws or something and yeah the, those are the two limitations now let's get started and use a pre trained network to to do image classification so we'll be using google collab notebook and to do that you just need to go into your google drive 
click on this new button over here, go to more and click on Google Collaboratory. This will uh, load a collab notebook for you. Just give it a minute. Yeah, and so uh, Google does uh, offer us to choose more GPU power. For that, you need to click on runtime over here. Click on change runtime type, hardware accelerator, choose GPU, and click on save. And click on the connect button over here. So yeah, this will connect to you, connect you to a server, uh, a Google server. Yeah. So let's add a markdown cell, uh, which which is text over here. And also you can do this locally in your system or or on your uh, Jupyter notebook if you need to. Just just ensure that all the all the libraries are downloaded. So let's start with imports. You need to hit shift and enter key at the same time and yeah the cell gets started the first thing we need to import is put numpy as np you can code along with me i'll be doing it at your pace so yeah the the next thing we need to do is import insert flow as pf and we need to import keras so keras is a library which will be you know uh, serving all these pre-trained models for us, and it will be using TensorFlow in the backend to do so. And next, we we need to import a few functionalities from Keras. So from Keras uh, dot preprocessing. Okay, so what what we can do here is that the shortcut for autocomplete in Colab is pressing Control and sp Control K and Spacebar at the same time. So Keras dot preprocessing dot image we import two functions that are image to array which is img underscore two underscore array and we import load underscore image so yeah and now we'll we'll get to pre-processing so let's add another markdown cell and uh pre Processing. We need need a few images now, right? So I have I have downloaded a few images and I'll upload the same. To do so, you need to click on this folder icon on the left and just uh, you know drag and drop the images which you need to upload over here. So yeah. For now, I'm just uploading a normal image. This is a normal lion image. This is a reminder that that once you know, once you're disconnected to the server, this this data that we have uploaded will not be saved. So uh, right now, I'm using this very normal lion image. And yeah, we'll be using this for our predictions. So let's set up this as a constant. Image one is equal to. Uh, click on the three dots over here, copy path, and in double quotes, paste this path. So that's why we imported this load image functionality. So we'll be using that now. Use a variable image load underscore image and pass in the image underscore one. It, uh, and uh, this, this loads the image, and then you need to use uh, display image. Hit shift enter. And uh, yeah, your image should load up now. Right. So now let's let's discuss a bit about image pre-processing. So in the case that we explored by understanding neural networks, those are all black and white images, right? So you can you can you know just uh, spread out those seven eighty four pixels and and pass it to the network. But these are colored images, and the the composition of a colored image is that. Each pixel in this colored image has three color channels coming in, red, gre green, and blue. So all of these RGBs have, have different values, uh, ranging between 0 and 255 for each. And, and different combinations in these values add up to give us all the colors, uh, which we can see in an image. So to, to get a better sense out of it, uh, I'll just show you what the image looks like. So these are with this is an image with this is the same image with only green channels active. This is the same image with only red channels active. This is the same image with only blue channels active. 
right so the where the wherever the intensity of blue is high the value of that of the blue color in that channel is closer to 255 now what we do is to to pass this to the network uh, all these three images that I uh, that I showed you uh, imagine this this image uh, there's a x number of pixels in the height there's y number of pixels in the width and you take a spreadsheet with equal number of cells as there are pixels in this image and in each cell you store the value of the the number of the number of blue the amount of blue in in the in the particular channel and similarly you do the same process for green and red now you have three spreadsheets uh, one has the the in the value of red color channel for the particular image another one has the value of green channel and the third one has the value of all the blue blue channels now what you do is that you stack these uh, spreadsheets one over the another uh, other and then you serve it to the model you, we don't exactly use spreadsheets, but we form a array out of this image. That, that's the reason behind importing this image to array functionality. So now what we'll do is that we'll uh, you can use a variable image underscore two underscore array. Uh, it, in, in, uh, first, let's use a variable image underscore array equal to use the functions that we imported image to array and pass in our image. And let's see how the array looks like. Yeah, so as you can see, these are the values of a particular input channel. Let's see the shape of this array. Yes, it's 408 by 612 by 3. And 408 by 612 is the, is the other dimensions of our image over here. Now, yeah, this, uh, let's, let's just, you know, load our model. For now, and we'll see what if you know model and and try to do some predictions. Reprocessing, hit shift enter. We need to import our model again from Keras. So uh, you know, just write type it along with me from Keras dot applications dot vgg19. So vgg19 is the model which will be using today and uh, this this model is is 19 layer, layers deep sort of and yeah it it categorizes it classifies your input into a thousand about thousand different uh, in like the, there are thousand different output types in this model so import vgg19 hit shift enter and to to load the model we just need to use a variable and pgg 19 pitch and in this bracket we'll also specify the weight I, why we are doing this i'll just explain it in a minute weight is equal to image net shift enter and yeah this this model will load up it will take a few seconds till then let's go to keras documentation and uh, read about vgg 19 so we'll see a few things over here. The, the first point is that the default input size of this model is 224 by 224. So what this means is that we need to, we need to you know, change the dimensions of our image. So that's the first thing we'll do now. And apart from that, so yeah, ImageNet, uh, ImageNet so what we, there are two ways that we can use this model. Ideally, uh, either you can just use the structure of this model, or you can also use the weights that that are assigned to it when when you know these people who, who made the model uh, trained it so so those weights are, are specified as image net and and that's why we we you know use this attribute uh, though the default is also image net in case of vgg 19 but it's better to use this for for our own understanding now we need to change the the structure of our image so this load image function also has a target underscore size uh, attribute and what uh, we can do with it is that uh, we can change the, the dimensions of the image so we need 224 by 224 right so just specify 224 comma 224 over here hit shift enter and, and yeah our image is is smaller now uh, run this cell again as well, and uh, the shape of array is changed as well. 
so now this should work right let's let's just try so model just give me a second yeah model dot predict and we pass in our array over here let's see if it works so yeah we get an error and that's what i expected as well so the so the expected shape is there's one more dimension in this shape a uh, none comma two to four by two to four by three and and the reason behind this is that you you might be serving multiple images at the same time in uh, in some cases right so that is why this this none thing is there so uh, now we need to expand the dimensions of this uh, this array and to do that we use our good old friend numpy use a variable expanded underscore array and we pass we use numpy which is np dot expand underscore dims yeah expand underscore dims and so the the two things we need to give to this function is the first the array that we need to expand and the axis along which we need to expand the, the array, which in our case is zero. I'll, uh, I'll uh, explain you why, why we need to specify axis as zero in a minute. And we let's check the shape of our array, expanded underscore array dot shape. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a one over here. And if we would have specified axis as one, then let's see what would have. So we we still expanded a dimension, but but in in a different manner. So we need that one to be. We need to stack up images. That's why we need that one to be over on the leftmost side while expanding dimensions, and that's why we we specify the axis as zero. So yeah, run this cell again, and there's one more step of pre-processing which which we need to do before we pass the image to the model. And there's a there's an inbuilt function in VGG19 that goes by preprocess underscore input. Let's import that as well. And this this better formats the the image according to what what the model requires from us. So yeah, let's use this. Use a variable preprocessed and use our function which we just imported preprocessed underscore input, and we pass in our array. Expanded underscore array. And we pass this pre-processed functionality to the to our model. Pre-processed. Shift enter and let's see. This will take a few seconds. Hmm. So we do get an output, but but these are just random values which make absolutely no sense for now, right? So yeah, we need to use another one more function, which goes by decode underscore prediction, another uh, predictions, uh, another built-in function which we can import very easily. And let's let's save this in in a variable prediction, and we pass this variable to our decode function that we just imported predictions and. Let's see if, if we can get something which makes sense to us now. And yeah, we do. So the, the best, let's also display the image over this. Hmm. So we do get an output and let's see. So the first prediction is line, which is correct with a 99.9% .9 probability. Wow, <laughs> like that's very good, right? Because uh, we just took a random image from our internet and this model was able to work so well with, with this. Now, this uh, let's let's use another image and try try this once again, right? Just give me a second. Hmm. So this time around, I'll be using this image, which is of a football. So let's... Load this image and uh, store this in another variable. Score two is equal to path. Double quotes, paste it, hit shift enter, and and 
yeah we need acha so we need to do a lot of steps to to you know we need to change everything from here let's let's just uh, we need to do all these steps again to to send this image to the to the model so let's write a a function which which takes uh, an uh, image as an input and does all the all the steps of pre processing for us in in one go right that will be helpful so let's define a function which name it vgg underscore pre processing and we we send the image as an as a as input so let's go step by step the the first step was to to load this image so let's just change the variable names accordingly so image underscore function and we pass in the image we imported we the image we got from the input input over here the next step was to convert this to an array right so again image underscore array underscore function and we pass in the image underscore Core function over here. The next step was expanding the dimensions. So again, use the same code, and we pass in the image array over here. We expand the dimensions. And that's it. Uh, okay, we still need to use our pre pre process input pala the functionality, and we need to return. Let's just Ask our function to return this value. Return and expanded array underscore function. Yeah, this we are good with this function now. Now what what we just need to do is that we use a variable preprocessed uh, underscore two and we use our preprocessing function which we just wrote vgg underscore preprocessing and we pass in our image that football image that we we uploaded which is stored in a variable image underscore two and then we we just ask our model to predict it prediction underscore two is equal to model dot predict and be processed underscore two and then we need to decode this record uh, underscore predictions and pass in the prediction underscore two. Hit shift enter and let's see what happens. And yeah, here we have the the, the first uh, uh, output of the model is soccer ball again with with a very good percentage, ninety nine point nine. So yeah, it's till now it seems too good too good to be true, and it is. This is not always the case. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, let's let's you know add one more image. Uh, let's upload one more image. So now I'll upload an image of a of a pizza, and let's see what what our model does. Yeah, okay, I've uploaded the pizza image. Let's copy path, change the variable name of image to itself. And hit shift enter on this cell and hit shift enter on this cell. And the best prediction our model has is of a pomegranate, which doesn't make sense. And, and our model is not confident with any of the predictions, right? 26% pick with a 40, 14% and pizza with 9.8%. Still decent, I guess, because, uh, you know, imagine this, this mo mo model can ca classify uh, a lot of things like right? it classifies from things like keys to to a mouse so this is, this is a very broad range so this is still not bad considering this this model was not specifically intended to use for anything and yeah i just wanted to give, give you an idea that this this model thing not always works with with a very good accuracy let's let's just do one more thing before before we wrap up the with the session uh I'll just upload all the images which, are, which I have right now. These three are yet to be uploaded. And then there's, there's a ship to image and a river to image. Yeah, so let's say you have a folder. Let's make a new folder. And I'll name this as images. And transfer the Im these images 
to to the folder. Uh, let the lion and pizza image be out of the folder. Uh, yeah, drag and drop everything else into the folder. And let's say you want to, you know, run through all these images at once and get the get the prediction from from the model. So let's try and do that. Let's let's write uh, let's write code for the same. And that, that's the last ta last task we'll be doing today. So first step is again we need to get the the, the path of this folder. So let's use a variable folder directory and double quotes paste this. And then what we need to do is we need to loop through the images, right? So use a for loop for image in, and we need to import uh, one more directory, which is OS. So let's head up to our imports, import OS, hit shift enter. And uh, we, we'll be using our list list directory well of function OS dot, OS dot list. Uh, list dir and we pass in our folder directory so what this function does is is that it it goes through all the directories or the files present inside the folder that we we have passed for all files in this folder what we need first is the path of the image right so let's use a variable image underscore path and we'll be using one more function from from our os library that is os dot path dot join and we need to pass our folder directory and our image so what this this function will do is that it will take the path till the folder and add the name of the image using using a slash and hence we got get the whole image path right and the next step we will do is that uh, we need to pre-process right so you know this uh, the, the number of steps we, we have reduced by writing that function. So we let's use a variable data, vdg underscore pre-processing, and we pass our image path. 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 And the next thing you need to do is uh, we need our, our model to, to make some predictions. So use a variable model dot predict and pass in the data. And finally, we need to decode our predictions, right? But now, now we'll use a variable decoded and decode. Now there's an obvious issue, right? We need to store these predictions somewhere and then, then you know, you can't list out everything at one go. So let's just pass our predictions for now and we'll use a, use a Python list to, to store all these predictions. So let's use a list store underscore prediction use an empty list for now and then what we do is that we uh, we append these this uh, the, these predictions to that list store underscore prid dot append and code decode it shift enter let's see if this works it does store underscore prid so we do get our predictions, but but we can see what what each one is about. So let's let's use a nested list, and we'll uh, upload both the image name and and the decoded predictions inside the, the uh, list. Hit Shift Enter, run this cell again, and yeah, now we have the image name and uh, the predictions. So let's just see what what the model is predicting before we close the session. So I used a, a, a cat building image from BPHC. Let's see how good this goes. So the, the first prediction is palace. There's lakeside. There is monastery. So yeah, it's not bad considering I just used a, uh, used a random image. And it does look like a palace. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Football thing I already I already showed you. There's a there's an image of Virat Kohli hitting a cover drive, I guess, and. The best prediction was of a ball player, seventy-four percent, not bad. Then we, then I had a, a ship image. Let's see how this went. Yeah, the first prediction is is a liner, which is correct, ninety-four point nine nine percent. Great. Uh, the football uh, we already did, and there's an image of our Audi, 
yeah this was not very good i guess i skipped the river there's a there's a river ka image as well yeah these are the predictions valley lake side rips not bad so yeah that's uh, pretty much it for today if if you want to try this out again what you can do is that there's another very common model which goes by the name inception resnet it's it's a huge model it has about 150 hidden layers and has been trained on billions of images again can classify the output into 1000 different categories the, you can easily search for its uh, its documentation on keras and and you can try these same steps out and it should work let's just rename the notebook right yeah so that's it from my side today i i hope you enjoyed the session and got to learn learn something and got uh, got a taste of what neural networks are and how how are they very smart and useful for us and yeah if there is any feedback do do let me know in the comment section and uh, yeah that's it from my side thanks for attending the live stream uh, so and uh, please fill out the event wrap up form that you have received by mail thanks guys <laughs>